Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. Today is Tuesday, January 19th. We're, uh, we're running on a Tuesday due to yesterday's Martin Luther King holiday. Uh, tonight, we've got a few things on our agenda. We've got our usual minute approvals. We've got a discussion, um, actually an appointment uh, with a recommendation by the Board of Assessors for the, uh, their administrative assistant. We've got a discussion about our town caucus election and annual town meeting because like last year, um, looks like we may be looking at uh, pushing that out because of everything that's going on. And uh, we also have an appointment uh, for an alternate building inspector. And then we've got... Uh, our usual updates on 120 North Main, our COVID updates and select board and town administrator updates. So without further ado, let's uh, get rolling and uh, look at our minutes for January 11th. <clears throat> Motion. I'll right. second. All right, all those in favor of the minutes from January 11th? Aye. Aye. All right, three to zero on that one. <clears throat> um, and then let's uh, let's hop in next to our uh, board of assessors administrative assistant approval. We've got a, we've had a recommendation from the board of assessors for Kevin. Is it Rudden or Rudin? I'm not sure how it's pronounced. You can never tell unless you got a pronunciation key or somebody tells it to you, right? Yeah, I think it's I think it's uh, Rudin. Rudin. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if uh, we. We invited him to come, so I don't know if you want to. We could we could put and then come back or. Yeah, we could do that. We can uh, give him some time. We can pop back to that. Um, let's go. Uh, why don't we do the appointment of the alternate building inspector before the town caucus? Because that would probably be a little quicker than the town caucus discussion in the meeting, I would imagine, right? <clears throat> Um, so we've been, uh, discussing the, the building inspection for the Sanderson place and, and yep. formerly known as 120 North Main Street, AKA Sunderland yep. senior affordable housing. Um, and now that's a, a bigger project than most for, for the town and, and what would be required. And so, um, the, the building commissioner and Tom's on, feel free to jump in, but um, talked, uh, figured out a, a plan and, and I think it's acceptable to um, to RDI. They, they seem to, uh, good with the plan was to appoint an alternate building inspector. We were also looking at, um, you know, potentially hiring a, a third party inspector, but we thought that this would be a, a quicker, smoother process. And so we had, uh, reached out to the former building commissioner in Northampton. Is that right, Tom? Um, yes, sir. Yes. Um, <clears throat> who's got a lot of experience um, and and the, our building commissioner, Tom Quinlan, was, was comfortable with him, um, you know, and, and his work and, and felt confident that he'd do a good job. So um, we thought that that would be the, the best way to move forward. All right. <clears throat> It should work all around and you know the board is, is um, you know trying to we want to get the senior housing in so it should save you know the company money and all and um, you know his experience is, is phenomenal he's figured in his time to be at every meeting which would be hours that would almost be impossible you know um, even if it was a smaller um, you know job for me because of Hadley um, so it's gonna it should work out very well um, I spoke with him a few times in the last couple of weeks and um, as long as the board is okay with it, it it'll, uh, I think it'll be a good thing for everybody. Yeah, so, sounds like a good solution in the end for everything, so, which was good. <clears throat> Anybody have board, any- Does uh, that work for you? Yeah, <laughs> okay, good. I know, okay. All right, and, and we'll get down to just regular discussion of uh, Sanderson Place too, a little afterwards in the meeting. This is just for the, the appointment. <clears throat> So the if I if I could, Mr. Chair, if we could flush this out a little bit, we're we're yeah. we're hiring, and I had a conversation earlier with Jeff about this, but I think it's important for the public to know we're appointing and hiring for the duration of of essentially this project, which could be appointing for the first part of this 
last part of this fiscal year and maybe the most part of next fiscal year based on the construction schedule. Right. It's important to warn the public that you know this is not usurping their appropriation process through town meeting. This is paid for through the permit fee. That's an excellent point and clarification. Because again, Thank we can't you. just yeah. go hiring without an appropriation. <laughs> exactly. That guy's <clears throat> leaving right now. Well, actually, he's leaving tomorrow. But anyway. That, that, that is an excellent point. <clears throat> All right. Do we have any other um, questions or anything on that? Or are there, if I could, Mr. Chair, are there, yeah. you, you worked with Lou before, are there expectations that are, are different for this size of project with respect to the alternate building inspector? There's no rubber stamping. Don't look for that. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> what was, I'm sorry, you were winning. My, my, my question was actually uh, toward uh, RDI. Okay. And that was Sorry. about the level of inspection services that, you know, this, this uh, pays for it. It's, it's a bit of a compromise from the original permit fee. That's how we got here. Yeah. And the need for a full-time third party. Uh, you've worked with Lou before on other projects. I have. Great. Good. Yeah. He's going to, I've never been, I've never had a project where the building inspector came to the weekly job meetings. Um, so that's a higher level of involvement than we would normally get. Mm -hmm. um, but I have a, a lot of respect for this particular um, individual and feel like he's gonna bring a lot of value um, to the project. Yeah, hopefully that extra involvement will lead to a better product in the end and everything. So for everybody- Well, or, or some save time. Cause yeah, exactly, that's what I mean. It's all yeah. about coordination and lead time and things like that. And he's very seasoned, so. Right. I think he'll just be a really great addition to the team. Right. Less chance of things getting missed. He'll he'll be talking about it weekly and and yeah. you know coming and doing an inspection a week later and something gets done and has to be redone um, all around. It should save you know that way as well. The contractor as well. Yep. <clears throat> great. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. Uh, do we have a motion on the appointment then? Motion. I will second. All right, all those in favor of uh, appointing, uh, Mr. Rudden, I was trying to read my agenda. I have my agenda on my phone so I can see it here. <laughs> uh, all those in favor of the appointment uh, for the duration as noted by uh, Mr. Berger on there, it's not a permanent appointment. Aye. Aye. All right, three to zero on that. Thanks for all the work for the parties involved in that compromise. Yeah. <laughs> Thank I, you. I, yeah. I echo that. Thanks, everybody. All right. So next on our agenda, we've got our discussion about our town caucus election and annual town meeting dates. Um, due to a little thing called COVID and a few other budgetary issues, we're looking at bumping our dates out and everything this year once again. <clears throat> And I thought I saw our town clerk out there too. So um, with discussion for the caucus and everything. So why don't we start off with a talking since that's first in order about the town caucus. <clears throat> Hi, then, David. Um, hey. I did, I did want to, last week I misspoke about town meeting and town meeting can be um, delayed just by a vote of the select board according to chapter 39 section 9 it's the election that would need special legislation okay um so I, the town meeting i i think just needs to happen when you guys want it to happen um the election you know i've thought about it for a while there's pros and cons to both um but i think how I'm feeling now is I, I don't think you're going to have any questions and I, I don't think it's going to be a big controversial election that would need to be delayed. Um, but the select board is the one that puts the content on the ballot. So I'm kind of throwing it at you guys. Um, you know, if, you want to delay, we can 
do special legislation. If you don't think so, um, I'm fine with keeping things the way they are. I would suggest that we do, um, it is a citizens caucus that is at the beginning of March. I think maybe we would want to do um, something outside with cars. Um, you know, we need at least 25 people to, to have the caucus. Yeah. I, I'm thinking that's probably the easiest way to facilitate the caucus. I'm really afraid if we go to nomination papers, we might have a lot of open seats if anybody's not interested in going, running for yeah. their position. So you think about like everybody like going in the back lot behind town hall kind of in cars? I, I, yeah, I was that... kind of thinking. I think it would be easy to facilitate. I think we'd have to have it on a Saturday, like at 10 in the morning opposed to at night when it's dark and cold. That's true. And coffee. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> coffee and breakfast pastry. Coffee and pastry. There you go. I thought, that, I thought you guys would take care of that. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I, you do a great job bringing that in. There you go. Might entice some more people to show up, at least for the pastries anyway. Yeah, and it would be something new. That's true. Different. Yeah, different. Yep. Um, the only thing we'd have to maybe think about is just like a backup if it's raining or whatever. But I mean, otherwise, You're I don't see why day. that wouldn't work. What, How hey, about what? Pulled, pulled pork sandwiches? There Breakfast you go. Sandwiches. We could do pulled pork omelets or burritos. Pork omelets. All right. I like that, Davey. Or a little pulled pork breakfast burrito. <clears throat> All right, Wendy, you got a deal. I, yeah, I, just, I guess, it, you know, you guys need to decide, um, you know, about ballot questions, you know, what that you might want to put on there or, you know, to me, it seems like the kind of year that we're probably not going to be asking for money or anything like that. I don't know. You guys know that better than I. Yeah, I think it'll probably be quiet from a ballot question standpoint, I would imagine. At least based on what's going on so far. What Now, what date does that have to be on in March? Well, we usually have it on the first Monday in March. Okay, so that would normally be the, well, actually the first in this case, but. Uh, I, so I, I'm thinking it might be the last Saturday in February. Okay. So next week you would have to sign the, um, warrant for the caucus and then we would we would post it okay the next day so which gives us like... more than the two weeks required anyways okay so that we're looking at what the 27th of february then and does 10 a.m work yeah, I don't see why not. That seems I, it's late. You know, it's not super early. Yeah, I, our town likes likes the elections earlier. You know, they didn't like ten; they like eight. Eight. Yeah. Um, but that's of course a four-hour span, so we're hitting the people that like a later morning. So that's why I went with ten. That's true. And the caucus takes usually like under an hour. So, right. Yeah. But it's not terribly long. So, it's, it's usually just waiting for the 25 people to show up. <laughs> yep. That's right. Maybe we can put a little something in the notice about uh, donuts or pastries or something. You know, we could do that. Well, I, I think, you know, on this one, we should probably do a couple call outs just so yes. that people are, you know, aware that it's a little different. Yeah, I and would agree. I the Cindy can send something out from the website and then emails too. So we could do that a couple of times. Yeah, you, like I said, like the calls, the email uh, website, and then also like uh, channel fifteen too, like all those. 
all those right. mediums. Yep. Because, um, yeah, John's doing a great job with channel 15. So yeah, that's that, that um, be good. So if you guys are okay with that, I will um, do a warrant up for you to sign next week. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Hey, thanks. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Thanks, you too. Thanks, Wendy. So that'll be a, a, a fun uh, drive-in style town caucus with potential breakfast pastries this year, so, <clears throat> or snacks. <clears throat> so Mr. Chair, that's caucus and election, right? So we're gonna avoid, we're, we're discussing not asking for special legislation to change the election date in the caucus. That makes perfect sense. Yep. Now the last one, town meeting, yeah. right? Can we yeah. talk about town meeting? Yep. That's the next the next big nugget. <clears throat> I if I if I could afford um, an opinion, that would be that we take town meeting again because of our budgeting process and the quality of the information that we need to put forward to the public for a solid annual budget uh, that we postpone annual town meeting to second or second week of June. Yep, Cause that's right around the time we had it last year, I think, wasn't it? Very similar. I think it was June. the first, first week, one of the first two weeks that affords uh, some opportunity to get our own information in order and digested, it also affords us to clean whatever tea leaves we can from the state, which only in the last several weeks has finished last year's budget. Yeah. Let alone, I mean, I mean, it's really important for people to bear in mind the budget for the current year was finished basically in the holidays. Right. I, I personally would agree. I think it would kind of be a little irresponsible to charge into it on our normal schedule because we're not going to have, a, excuse me again, my occasional jumping jack there. Uh, I don't, we're not going to have um, all the information we need, right? And um, <clears throat> this could be a more tricky year than last year. And the more time out too we have, that might give us a little more flexibility with where it is. I don't I really don't yes. know if it'll have to be outside or not, but. Good point. Yeah. Hopefully we'll know a little more as we roll into that. What do you think about that, Tom? I'm fine, JB. That worked for a few, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. <clears throat> um, so we need a vote for that, right? Do we, do we know enough tonight to pick the date or do we wanna? Yeah, let's throw a date out there. Okay. So let's see, let me pull so up the calendar it's again. So it's usually a Friday. If I could, just, if I could interrupt. Yeah. Hey, Wendy. <laughs> I, I would try to at least go for the middle of June, but okay. not too far towards the end of June because you only have until June 30th. So if the weather's not cooperative or- Right, whatever, that's true. Like a, a week of a leeway of time to, to delay it to. So, so as, I, as I look at the and then pick another date. So as I look at the calendar, you know, we have historically had it by bylaw on a Friday night. I totally get that. I think last time we did it on a weekend day and that made a great deal of sense. Yeah. I look at the calendar, the second Saturday in June is June 12th. 12. Yep. That leaves 19 and 26 as potential. Uh, fallback dates if something goes south or sideways. Yep, exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you think about that, town clerk? I think that's perfect. Okay, good. Um, do we have a, should we do a motion there for the 12th of June for postponing our annual town meeting? I'd make a motion to postpone the annual, Sunderland annual town meeting from its it's date by bylaw to June 12th of 2021. Second. Good idea. All right. All those in favor of uh, the motion? 
Mr. Chair, can I? I oh, yep. Too late. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My screen froze. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're still standing there like that. <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, I, I was just going to ask if um, under understanding the, the likelihood, if you just wanted to wait um, to confirm that with the moderator. That oh, available. yeah, that's true, because we usually have them in, in consultation with the. Yeah, but this time of year, he's probably just sitting on his porch watching the cars. <laughs> Actually, I think his porch has a big you know, hole. He's not under busy it. farming or he, anything at that he, time, is yeah. he? Yeah. I, I've uh, been trying to text him, so um, but he hasn't answered. So uh, I was just gonna say, knowing that that's the preference of the board, do you just want me to con try and confirm with him, and then we can make the formal vote right. at, at the next meeting or the following. yeah, that's fine. We can do that. Good thing we didn't vote, Dave. I know, right? <laughs> Wait a minute. There's still time. <sighs> That's true. If he texts us back, we could always do it a little later in the meeting. There's, but. there's a motion on the table, and we have to carry that through next week now. It's a parliamentary yeah. <laughs> conundrum. Uh, well, well, don't we'll clear. forget, you guys can do it. No, you can withdraw it, Scott. That's true. You can withdraw. All right. That's true. You want to withdraw it, and then just for... I'll, uh, right. I'll, I'll withdraw until we have confirmation from the moderator about availability and his input on uh, administering town meeting on June 12th. All right. Um, all, all those in favor of withdrawal? Aye. Aye. All right. Got to keep our parliamentary I's and T's dotted and crossed and all that. So <sighs> procedure is still important, you know? despite what some people may think. All right, let me just pull my agenda back up here. Okay. And I think, Kevin, are, are, did you just call in? I did, sir. Okay. Oh. So we have Kevin on now, if you want to circle back to that. Circle back to town meeting? Uh, no, sorry, yeah, to the, the uh, Board of Assessors Administrative of Assessors. Assistant Appointment. Got it. And please accept my apologies for being late. I booted up my home computer at 620, and since then it has been updating continuously. <laughs> uh, the lives of Windows updates, right? <laughs> there, and they I, all... I, I pride myself on not being late, so I'm terribly embarrassed to be um, A, not in person, but B, just over the phone and late. That's that's quite all right. I, I, uh, I ran into an issue with that today uh, during my work office stuff, so. It updates when it wants to update sometimes. Right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, we'll give you a little, uh, if you'd like to do a little introduction of yourself there. How, how about that? We can do that, Kevin. <clears throat> okay. My name, is, my name is Kevin Rudden. I currently am the administrative uh, assessor in neighboring Shutesbury. I'm also the chairman of the board of assessors in the town of Menden, Mass, where I uh, live full time. Um, I've been in the assessing field for, let's see, I'm, I'm running for my fourth term on the board in the spring, so nine years. I've been in Shutesbury for 21 months as their administrative assessor. I am uh, a certified Massachusetts accredited assessor by the Mass Association of Assessing Officers. Um, I don't know what else I can tell you. <laughs> No, that's all right. If you have any books coming out or anything, you know, <laughs> <laughs> movies, you know. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm, I'm helping a, a teacher edit a book on Excel for assessors. No, oh, there you go. And that, that's a valuable skill, I'll tell you. I spend a lot of time um, in worksheets, so. How's life in Menden? Yeah. Um, it's snowing out here right now. I don't know what it's doing in, uh, in Sunderland. No, it's always sunny. I, I left it's a, always sunny out here, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> I left the board of assessors meetings uh, at six fifteen, and it was uh, uh, snowing everywhere. Um, and when I left Shrewsbury this afternoon, it was quite nice. Yeah, <laughs> so, I think it skirted south it, of it, us. It, yeah, and if you folks don't know, I have a uh, a cottage in Shrewsbury where I stay several nights a week. So it, it's not that I'm in a uh, you know, 90 minutes away from Sunderland. I'm more about 15. There you go. <clears throat> well, I appreciate sure, you taking tough. the time. 
Kevin, you got a tough act to follow. Teresa was one of a kind. She did a great job for us. Yes. She did. She was very good. <clears throat> yes, so I understand. She has a good reputation in the, in the area. Very well. She did a nice job for us. And uh, the uh, I, I, I thought that she uh, was exceptional. For what she did, she, she with the assessors, because I, I and again, municipal, you know, mi municipal is a whole different animal, and uh, we're very lucky to find someone with experience, and especially being an assessor for uh, three terms. Uh, right. Yeah. You're, just, it, you're, it, it, you're, it you're probably unique. just get you're probably just getting used to the job right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the good news is through both uh, through both Menden and Shootsbury. Uh, we have an awful lot of Chapter 61 land, so I'm quite familiar with it. And uh, I had the pleasure of spending most of Sunday afternoon in Sunderland and driving around and looking at the beautiful farmland and things like that. Yep. Lots uh, of APR. Yes. Yep. APR 61A, 61C. We got a few of them. Nice variety. It's a very nice community. You got a you got a nice commercial base too for a small town. Sure. Yeah. Well, we look forward to working with you. And here, uh, I was very intrigued by uh, by the position because a it's right next door to uh, which is levered in between right next door to Shootsbury, and um, you know another nice town to do. And and uh, uh, just you know I'm part time in Shootsbury as well, so. Good. It kind of rounds out my week. Oh, excellent. If I, if it would be helpful, I could talk yes. a little bit about the process. Um, we posted uh, the job in the newspaper, um, in the recorder. We posted it on Indeed. Um, and uh, I believe Teresa sent it out to the uh, Board of Assessors listserv. Oh, nice. Um, we got a number of uh, responses, invited three people to interview, um, felt that, that Kevin was, was the best fit with um, great experience, uh, availability. Um, and he met with the Board of Assessors uh, only last week, I guess it was last week. Um, and, and they uh, also recommended um, his appointment, so. Excellent. All right, great. Nice. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Kevin Rodman, please. Oh, thanks, you beat me to it. All right, do we have a second? I'll second. All right, all those in favor of appointment of uh, Kevin Rodden to the spot? Aye. 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 Now I'll say officially, welcome aboard, Kevin. We're looking forward to having you on. Thank you very much. I promise I won't let you down. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. I'll be in touch with you tomorrow. All right. Good luck again, with that apologies. Windows update. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my apologies. Next time I'll uh, I'll turn the computer on an hour before the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to make it two or three the way they've been going lately. I'll tell you. <clears throat> That's certainly true. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I I appreciate your appointment and uh, look forward to to meeting you all in person. All right. Thanks. Have a good night. Good night. <clears throat> All right, then that brings us down to our old business category. <clears throat> uh, 120 North Main Street, AKA Sanderson Place, AKA Sunderland Senior Housing. So if you have any other, other topics uh, other than our building inspector appointment there. Yeah, so I, I got one update and um, Hopefully this was communicated to you too, Laura, from, from the attorneys talking about um, the mass docs uh, agreements, which is um, we are um, amenable to signing the mass docs. There, there's a, just the question about the ability to remove a, an affordable housing restriction being terminated on foreclosure. And it sounds like at least some of the lenders are okay with that. And we're just waiting for confirmation from uh, the rest and then we can move. Um, but otherwise we would, we would sign on to mass docs and not have to have a, a different one. And I, don't, I assume you heard that same thing, Laura, or your work. 
I do, and I have a little bit more information about it, which is that um, the the lender who expects to get paid back in this deal is Greenfield Savings Bank. So they're doing a construction loan that gets paid back when we finish, um, and then they're doing a permanent loan. And they have concerns about the proposed change uh, by town council, not so much with their permanent loan because it's not a very large one, but the construction loan is a lot of money. Um, of course, it's only happening during construction. So if you've had a foreclosure during construction, I mean, they're, they're just feeling, the bank's feeling a little bit exposed, I think, while they have millions yeah. of dollars out the door. So I think that is still needing to get resolved. That's as far as I know so far. And, you know, there are several attorneys at work on it, but I just wanted you to understand kind of the, the context of it. Okay. So, Laura, what you're saying is that the construction loan, of course, gets once completion happens, that's yeah. bought down and they go into a, a more permanent, more predictable. Right. And the, lang the language is such that, you know, God forbid RDI or whoever holding, holding that note goes under. The yeah. point that t our town council is making is that we want to make sure that it the even during construction, it's retained as affordable housing. Is that the pinch? I, I don't know yet. I think yep. it's just a kind of standard uh, legal response yep. to protect the town's interests. Um, and maybe it will shift around a little bit. Um, just for, again, for context, uh, Greenfield Savings is going to lay out about an, a little over a $9 million construction loan. Mm -hmm. It gets paid back primarily by the tax credits, but they won't pay until everything is done. Sure. Um, and then they're probably going to carry a permanent loan around 600,000. Mm -hmm. So really different amounts of money. Um, right, right. So you may hear more about it next week. If we get stuck, we'll come back to you guys. I'm hoping they'll just be able to work it out with each other, but, but we'll okay. see. Um, I would add the town has protections for affordability in the zoning permit as well. So as long as the zoning use is non-conforming, we, it has to stay affordable. Um, so it's only in the event that the town passed a bylaw that made it conforming would right. there even be a question about a change of use. So you have a couple of layers couple of, of protection. Okay. Um, I have a few other quick things if, if you have time. Yep. Yeah, go right ahead. Um, chasing the sewer capacity letter, I'm sure it's drifting around somewhere. Maybe you'll we, sign it tonight. We just signed it. Yay. Um, there were a couple questions that I sent to Jeff and to Tom about the building permit fee. And um, if you can just let me know about those, that'd be great. Uh, so Sharon Everett, who's the town council is working on this item that we talked about. She's gonna draft a land development agreement, which is part of the language in the original option. We haven't seen it yet, but she's working on it. Um, and she's also gonna be preparing to transfer the property. So at long last, <laughs> property will not be owned by the town anymore. Um, we'll transfer over. Um, we did receive the, the CPA money. I want to say thank you for the quick turnaround on that. And to let you know that um, the town requested local preference for this project, and we are still waiting a decision from DHCD. But we do have one clarification, which is that um, the town is only allowed, we're all only allowed to have local preference for units that don't have project-based vouchers. So if you have a, a rental subsidy, Section 8, MRVP, you cannot just limit it to the folks who have local preference. So it will only be a portion of the units that would be subject to local preference. And I just wanted to make you aware of that. It wasn't something I was particularly thinking about. Um, and we are, you know, we're, we're working as, we're scrambling as fast as we can. Um, I think in the next week or two, we'll have a construction mitigation plan, which is something that the town officials wanted to see. Um, this project involves a lot of fill, first going off the site, um, topsoil going off, yep. structural fill coming in, topsoil coming back. Um, the uh, general contractor has communicated with uh, Baltazar, who's doing the, the road work. And it looks like the fates are with us. So it looks like we'll be able to get through the bulk of our trucking work before they really get serious and tearing up uh, oh, the road, which That's is good. would be great. 
So we're even more motivated <laughs> by that because <laughs> once they start working on the road, it's really going to bog things down for, for everyone. Including we'll keep our fingers access. crossed for the weather for you too. Yeah. Uh, so I think that was all I just, I don't know if people have questions for, for me. Um, we're just kind of chugging away on all the, all the legal stuff that goes with um, closing on financing. I have no questions. Thanks. Uh, all right, thanks. Appreciate the update. Sure. All right. <clears throat> all right, now we come down to, I see it uh, looks like Caitlin's there for our COVID-19 update. <clears throat> yes, hi. How are you? <clears throat> Good, I'm doing well. No, you didn't have to stand up for me, thank you. <clears throat> I appreciate it though, so gentlemanly. Okay, so um, our COVID-19, what I've done is I've, um, I also have some vaccine information too. So okay. we'll throw it all in together. Um, the COVID-19 update. Um, so the people that get my weekly updates know how um, I tabulate um, uh, Sunderland's act uh, Sunderland's cases. Yep. Um, I have what I consider active cases. Active cases are cases that are currently in isolation. And that would be at least a 10 day look back from today. Because that is when you have a positive test um, there are other ways to get out of isolation if, if you're a, uh, an essential worker, but you're in isolation for at least 10 days. Um, and that is what we consider an active case. Um, you're still uh, able to pass, you know, you might have symptoms. Um, we don't want you passing on any virus. Um, right now, Sunderland has 11 active cases in isolation, um, two of which ends, end their isolation at midnight tonight. Okay. So, um, and the reason I say this, you know, why didn't I just say nine? Um, <laughs> because I might get emails overnight that we get new cases. I mean, these are moving targets. So I like to give the information that I have at the moment. And uh, um, so at the demographics, we blow the statistics out of the water in Sunderland. I say this every time I meet with you guys. Our oldest case, we did have an outlier um, of a 90 year old woman who technically was a Sunderland resident because that was her home home residence, but she was in a, um, a care facility. Okay. So she was kind of credited for Sunderland, but she was actually uh, count, county away, um, is uh, 68, is, has been, uh, you know, so our average age, it hangs out around 30, maybe 40. Hmm. Um, and it's just so strange. This has been from the beginning. Every time I look at the average age, we are just far below the country, the state, our, our age. Um, and yeah, and right now um, of the 11 cases we have, the oldest person we have, I'm looking at it's 54. Due to the student population maybe? Is that what's skewing <laughs> it down or? Kind of, um, 27, 31. Uh, no, I wouldn't say it's necessarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, they might be graduate, but you know, of that we have only uh, three UMass okay. affiliated cases. So I, I know they're just, for some reason, our population just seems to consistently I mean I'm looking back over old notes and um you know of may have to do with the professions that people are involved in perhaps. well we have a lot of retail 
Yeah, we right. have a lot of food service, a lot of retail. That's um, what I was thinking, yeah. We have a young population. No. You know, um, and our older people, honestly, our older people probably stick home. <laughs> our older people aren't going, you know, aren't right, are doing what up. they're supposed to be doing. They're listening and they're not, they're not getting COVID, knock on wood. <laughs> um, and we have, and we do have a lot of apartments, you know, and they, the, probably the um, economic demographic of retail um, yep. is probably who's getting the, the virus. Um, I do see when I'm, when I find employers, not everybody gives up who their employer is. <laughs> they might say, they might tell tracing, they, they work in retail or something like that. Um, but you know, our tracing is only as good as the questions they answer it. It, you know, it is not the Gestapo. It's not a communist state. <laughs> we ask questions. And a lot of people are very, are quite cooperative um, about contacts and stuff. But as soon as you start getting into where do you work, who's your employer, they get a little nervous. Um, but we're having decent um, cooperation. But you know, um, but they will say retail. Yeah. You know, they Just will say generic. That. Yeah. Generic. Yeah. Um, so we're in red right now, right? And okay, then, so I'm gonna explain that because yeah. um, I think it's very important and especially anyone who's watching who doesn't understand. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I worked for the state for years and I often say that. <laughs> and I'll be quite frank with you. I am not 100% sure why the state is doing this, um, why they are using a formula they're using. The state is using a two week rolling um, data period to get this color coding number. I spoke with somebody at DPH and I asked him why. Um, he gave me an answer that absolutely did not satisfy me. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, I tried to ask him in different ways. I tried to, and he just did not have, the, he didn't know, he didn't have the answer. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, their numbers rarely match mine. Hmm. And I actually have names and addresses that go to these numbers. Hmm. So I know my numbers are right. And so I'm not happy <laughs> to say the least. Um, but that's, you know, I, I get they're working with the best they can do. I don't understand why they, they have this, their color system, but they use a two week rolling period. Huh. So they're not counting cases because I'll give you an example. The two weeks that got us into the red from green to red jumped over everything. The first week, and I have to move my cat off of all of my notes, went from December 27th to January 9th. That came out last week. Huh. Now, if you want to talk about old data, it's completely old. Right. Because hmm. these people are back at work. So they were sort of reporting in their ears, essentially. Yes. You know, when you look at that. And but somebody could be out of the quarantine period. In 10 days. Yep. And, you know, I was, I was interviewed by the recorder and they said, is this a surprise to you? And I said, absolutely not. This is the surge from Christmas. Oh, oh right. Exactly. Because, I mean, it's probably actually not bad considering the, the massive spike that we've been seeing nationally. Right. And um, so we ended up with 28 cases. Of course, the state had 29. I'm not quibbling over one case. Doesn't yep. matter. So that was December 27th to January 9th. The next reporting period, so that's 20, not, they'll, I'm just using their numbers, 29 cases, 25 cases and up in a town of under 10,000 people is red, is considered red. 
So that is the whole idea of a category. There's nothing more, nothing less. It doesn't matter if it's a, um, if you have spikes, it doesn't matter where these people got the cases. It doesn't matter the demographics, nothing. That's just a number. As you hit that threshold percentage, basically. You... It's not a percentage, it's a no. threshold because they don't take it per 3,600 people. They hmm. just say everyone under 10,000, so they cut category, it off at really. 25 okay. people. So that it's hmm. arbitrary. Okay. <laughs> I asked about that, he had no answer. Plus now that the governor has lifted any type of penalties, there's actually no reason for even doing this. But I asked about that, he didn't have an answer. I said, okay, fine. Now, the next period they're looking at is one, three to 117. Okay. So we are repeating the second week of, that of other the first load. period. So if you think about it, we are not counting cases because then we would be double counting every person from that second week. So it's a rolling time period yeah. <laughs> or else we'd be double counting everybody right. for one week. Um, and so when, you, when I ran one three to 117, which is now going to be our next designation for the color. I got uh, 29 cases, which is going to keep us in the red category. Once again, these are old cases because as of midnight tonight, we actually only have nine cases. but the state doesn't care. Yeah. So I guess the, the question then would be, how does that, what effects will that have on us? You know, for instance, like somebody will say, all right, how does that affect the schools, things like that? You know, because right. that's, right. If, you're, if you're rolling off of the color versus the actual number at a given point. And that's uh, what I am trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out what, benefit this color system has to the state or to anybody. What I am doing is I am feeding this information real time to the superintendent because it goes into the media that were read, but it's not real time data. Right. So it's misleading and it's misinforming our citizens. All right, you have to have basically an explanation with it because somebody sees, oh, we went from, especially when you go from green to red, that, right. that, that kind of trips off a, you know, a, a bit of concern because somebody's like, oh, well, now we're in red. Right. So, yep. And not one of these cases has ever touched the school system. Which is good. Right. I mean, we had one back in November. Yeah, I remember that. But I'm talking about when we talk about these, you know, from December 27th to now. Right. Like these two the rolling time periods that brought us up to red. We were in green when it touched the school kids. <laughs> so right. how does that reflect what's going on in our town, in our region? And that's what I'm, I'm having a hard time with. We need to, um, and, and people aren't, no, no one has ever called to ask a question. Um, so what I'm doing is, is like we put out, um, the superintendent's office emailed me with the, the statement that they put out about Sunderland being in the red and, you know, I talked to the town administrator and I revised it a little bit 
And so that was put out to the school community, parents and teachers in the school community uh, about what being in the red means and what it doesn't mean. So we explained it on the same day that the red designation came out last Thursday, I believe. And we will do it again. <laughs> yep. You know, and so I'm doing it to kind of as a stopgap each time it comes out. I haven't, and I don't know if um, Cindy Bennett has received anything. She usually passes everything on to me, um, you know, or town clerk or town administrator um, has, you know, no one is questioning this to the town. I'm sure they're reading it in the newspaper and thinking, what, what does this mean? What is this? I'm more than happy to sit down and explain. I just think it's not fair to the community to be giving them information that is misleading. Is it correct? Yeah, it's correct for two weeks ago. And is it really correct? Not really, because they're using some very strange statistical data that, and keep in mind, I am not a statistician. I didn't, you know, I'm sure that there's a business course out there that somebody took and they know what they're doing, but I don't see the benefit to this information at all, unless somebody wants higher numbers um, to get funding or something. And, and there's always a benefit to somebody for something, but for, I don't see it. So I'm th thinking going, I mean, hopefully we'll start to see the numbers go down and sort of as a lead in, especially to your, to your next topic there about like vaccinations with those starting to roll out yeah. and everything. Hopefully we've hit the bump of the post, um, you know, the spike we knew was coming with Christmas. Yes. And now we'll hopefully start to slide down. I, I absolutely. Um, so, I mean, we see it. And you can yep. see it in the numbers I'm giving you. So obviously the next two week rolling period is going to be down. Yep. And, and that's where you're gonna see that. How, why are we going from green to red? And then we're gonna go to green again, not yellow. Y you know, and that's, that's where the weirdness is coming in with this color coding right. system. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have to do, maybe we'll go to yellow, but I, I just don't think so because we're dropping so severely, but we'll see. Um, Keep our fingers crossed that it keeps going down. Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, um, so I will, in that case, so, I mean, like I said, and to anyone who's listening, I absolutely welcome emails, calls, um, anything you need, please. I will try to do my best to explain I never give out any personal information, any HIPAA, but if you have any questions, you know, I am, that's my job is to break this big, large chunks of data down into small bits and explain what's going on to the best of my ability. And if I don't have the answer, I will find it. All right. Um, DPH knows me. <laughs> I call them. Um, so uh, the vaccine. So Franklin County, this is as of Friday was the last numbers that came out. Okay. Um, Franklin County received 1700 doses. Um, and uh, in the state total first doses administered was 206,000 uh, doses in the state and total second doses administered is uh, about 33,000. It's, um, it's not, you know, I'm not happy. It's not fast enough. Um, the status we're in right now is phase one. Uh, and what is happening is in our area, Greenfield is, has, uh, and the FERCOG has become the kind of like the super site they will be receiving, there's several, okay? There's different ways to get the vaccine. You're gonna get it through the state and you're gonna get it through local. Um, we are part of a local 
uh, vaccine distribution. We then break it down a little bit more. We are part of South County Emergency Dispensing. And um, that would be the four towns, Conway, uh, Waitley, Sunderland, and Deerfield. Did I get them right? I think so. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, yeah, and so that's where we're, so we do, and we'll be getting the, the vaccines for our area. Um, we do not have them yet. And um, what Greenfield is um, getting them right now and they are giving them out to the phase one. Um, and then there's a separate system giving out to the um, long-term care facilities. The state is giving them to pharmacy groups to give them out to long-term care facilities directly. The COVID facing healthcare workers, first responders, congregate care settings, that's jails, shelters, substance abuse programs, adult residential treatment programs. Um, they're the ones getting um, basically now. That's phase one. Also in phase one, starting February 1st, home-based care workers, non-COVID facing healthcare workers. That was just released on Friday. Um, they, under the umbrella of February, no date specific, phase two, 75 plus senior housing staff. That's a new one that was just released education workers, I, I, it's teachers, but it's also yeah. like people who work in education, uh, transit workers, retail workers, food service, court employees, um, 65 year and older. There's actually like a hierarchy inside there. That should start in February. General public should start in April. Now, what I am hoping for <laughs> is after phase one, it's completely open. That is what it, I'm hoping for. And we develop our plans of distribution as far as EDSs, the drive-throughs, the clinics, the sites, et cetera. I don't think that's what's gonna happen and I, I you know, but um, there are numerous uh, vaccine um, planning committees, meetings, <laughs> um, and we are starting ours, uh, but we still do not have a date and time for when we will receive our vaccine. Okay, and I think imagine people would also wanna check with their own physicians too. I would imagine is another. Phys only physicians that are in those groups. Yep. So if you're in Valley Medical, if you're in a Bay State group, individual physicians will not be getting vaccine. I, I think the paperwork, the storage and everything else. But if you're in a group, yes. Yep, okay. Very important, 211. 211 will also help if you dial 211. Okay, that's good for folks to know. Yes, very. And there's a, a live person who will walk you through things. Okay, good. That's really important for the elderly because picking up a phone and dialing 211 is a heck of a lot better than trying to... Have, we put, have we put that on um, the website and everything for dialing 211? Yep, dialing 211 okay. and the email address and FCAT put there. something on channel 15. 211 well. sponsored by United Way. Excellent. Good. And uh, and th that they'll actually, they're trained to just kind of, they're also trained to kind of talk yeah. older people down <laughs> a yep. little bit, you know, just or to actually literally to talk to them and let them know it's coming and we're really, you know, we're all in this together type thing. Um, and another thing is I've spoken with a few elderly residents 
um, and put them in my date book and I'm calling them back every week to let them know that I have no information, <laughs> but it, they just want to hear from us. Right. Just to know what's going on. So yes. I, I think it sounds like the bottom line is for everybody who's not elderly or in some kind of either, you know, frontline care or public interface like teachers retail and everything it will be at least april at the earliest for the rest of us so we just got to kind of hang in there and keep our ears peeled i think though that as the vaccine gets rolling people are going to get pushed up that's my gut feeling but we got to get it rolling right and, and it's that's... probably better to look to the farther date just yes all right yes yes yeah Let's and put everybody yes. will be pleasantly surprised, you know. That's fair enough. Yep. Mr. Chair? Yeah. So so if I could, Caitlin, just expand a little bit on what you're saying. Absolutely. That there is 68,000 residents of Franklin County. Every resident of Franklin County will be offered a vaccination. Yes. That, that'll yep. happen. Absolutely. Now, what, what's happening right now is that we are preparing for those vaccinations. What does that mean? If you're a healthcare worker, if you're a nurse, or you have the training to be able to give shots, the MRC, which is a medical reserve corps, is taking volunteers, signing up volunteers right now. So if you want a volunteer to work on the, on the medical reserve corps, they have a web page and you can join at www.wmwesternmassmrc.org. You can you could contact them to sign up, or if you were a normal person like the rest of us and you would want to work at a clinic, contact your local town. So you can call the town of Sunderland, put your name in, and and, and the reason you have to start now is that you just can't walk into one of these sites and work as a volunteer. You need to go through the Corey checks and, there, and, there's, a, and there's training that has to be done. So if you are interested and you want to participate in these vaccination clinics, please volunteer now. Talk to, talk to Wendy, a town clerk, or talk to Jeff, our town administrator, Get your name on the list and people that have served in the past on, on, on our drive-throughs. Look, right now, South County, we will be running an EDS. We will, that's, we, we are in line to do that. Uh, we are ready to do that. We are just ready. And, and Caitlin said it before, there's only 1,700 vaccination doses have been supplied to Franklin County. Not, not a whole bunch, but as soon as we're ready, as soon as we get the doses, we want to have people up and running and ready to start. We are, we, we've, got, we've got the, we believe that we have the, the, the paperwork and all of that taken care of. We, we will be able to do that. It's just maintaining the staffing and we need the staffing to do it. So if you're, if you're interested, if you're a nurse that would like to volunteer, um, even if it's just one day a week, an eight hour shift or four hour shift, if you could get your name in, then we can get all the back background check, all that kind of yeah. stuff out of the way. So you can just, we can streamline that situation, you know, streamline that process and get us work. But we're ready. We're ready. The paperwork, I, I can't begin to tell you how much paperwork is gonna be involved because the most important thing is not the first shot, well, it's it's a scheduling and getting keeping, to keeping second the second shot. Yep. And, and, that, and, and, and they're, it's done different ways, but hopefully when you, get, you sign up to get, when you, when you get your first shot, you're, you're gonna have a 20 minute before you can leave out of a clinic, you're going to have to wait 15 or 20 minutes before you're, and hopefully we will use that time to make you it get you signed up for your second shot, so you can make an appointment for your second shot. But just beware, one of the protocols that you have to follow when you get the shot 
is a 15 or 20 minute waiting period. Uh, that's a good and, piece of information, actually, oh, yeah. for folks. Yeah. yeah, that's good to know. You, you have to. And, 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 and believe it or not, when we run our, our regular flu clinic, technically our doctor's orders, because you can't, you have to run a clinic with doctor's orders, our doctor's orders have always asked that there be a 15 or 20 minute um, before, you know, before some, after the shot, before people leave. Yeah. Observation so period. Just to monitor them, yeah, in case of any reaction. So, yeah. so you will you will be, and, and that's one of the things that we're planning now if we do a drive-through. Well, where do we, where do we get cars lined up for 20 minutes? Yep. So. But a lot of logistics. Are, oh, all those things are being huge. talked about right now. But again, volunteers are important. We need we need to get your names in, and and so once they give us those doses, we will put up our little signs and we will go to work. Absolutely. Thanks, Tom. Have we put an announcement out there for that, Tom? What's that, David? Have we put an announcement for like a call for volunteers at all yet? Maybe we should do that if we haven't yet. I I think we have. Um, we've been talking about case. it, but yeah. if you, if, but yeah, if you want, if, if you're a vol if you want to volunteer, we need to get your name so we can start doing work. <clears throat> All right. So any again, if anyone has any questions or anything, um, get in touch with you. Yeah. Yep. All right. Great. I gave, <laughs> I always give a lot of information and I, you know, kind of just put it all out there, but. It, more information the better some sometimes people say we don't we don't give enough information and it's like well, we we try we try yeah, yeah. And, and again ju just so everybody knows um sometime sometimes the information changes two <laughs> or three times within a week yes right. <laughs> within a week That's once true. i i sent out an email in the morning and then by five o'clock it was wrong <laughs> so yeah. so it's a constantly moving target. Yes. Well, thank you guys. Thanks for the right. opportunity. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks, Kim. Yeah. Any other um, related updates, Jeff, on your end at all, or you good? No, no, I think <laughs> Tom covered it. Okay. All right. Good. <clears throat> Great. Uh, David? David? Yes, Wendy. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, That's okay. Mike is on the. Um, uh, you took my, my next yeah. announcement. I was going to say oh, okay. it. Okay. <laughs> That's um, okay. Because I saw Mike pop up and I thought, hmm, that must be moderator Mike. Hey, how are you? Better late than never. Yeah. I guess, huh? <laughs> Were you out on the porch, Mike? I was uh, I was plowing. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm ready, I'm ready for the spring. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the planting season's getting earlier and earlier, it's right? It's getting earlier and earlier. Winter, winter yeah. wheat. Winter the, wheat. There right you now. go. Winter wheat. <laughs> Yeah. So I got the I got the uh, date from uh, Wendy texted it to me the twelfth of June. Okay, and you assume this is going to be an outdoor event again. We yes, kind sir. of imagine now, yeah, based on what's yeah. going on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's why I'll clear my calendar. All right. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be out on the front porch at that time of the year, right, Mike? You we can have it on my front porch. There, there's nothing to be going. Hey, nothing go. happening in June, is there? <laughs> That's good. So the hopes, the hopes with a later date is that the budget would be in a better. Yeah, you'll have some better numbers to play with. I mean, oh, about June, June 12th, Michael, that'd be a perfect time. We could have strawberry and cream. We might, I might, you know, oh, if things go right, we, we could June have 12th. a strawberry. A yep. strawberry Strawberries and cream, Dave. Yeah. There yeah. you go. No, no donuts, strawberries and cream. I, yeah, you know, I good. could take that. That'd be a good idea. We do smoothies yeah. for people or something like that. Our smoothies, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You could be in charge of the smoothies. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fine. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then I'll make the motion to postpone annual town meeting from its bylaw-driven date to June twelfth again. Wait. Oh, he's got, got, got a question. Eh? I said, no. Go ahead. <laughs> Wait. Scott, do we do just want to? That's okay. Do we, do we just want to do a date or do we also want to set a time and location while we're doing it? Uh, sure. May as well, right? Because I'm guessing we'd be doing it behind town hall, right? Sure. 4, 4 p.m. behind the town hall. 10 a.m. <laughs> Mike, does four work or 10 work? Which do you think? 6 a.m. is good for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm actually good. with you. Yeah. <laughs> we'd have a different crowd, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, right, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
All right, four o'clock. Four, okay. All right, all those in favor of pushing the date out to the 12th of June at 4 p.m. behind Town Hall. Aye. Aye. All right, there you go. And I didn't see that third hand pop up, so we're good then. All right. Hey, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, sorry to have missed the early. No, that's all right. Okay. We, we had other stuff we could move on to, so. Okay, good. good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Okay, hey, take thanks. care. Thanks, you Mike. Too. Have a good night. All right. So that brings us down to our select board and town administrator updates. So I don't, I don't have any updates this week, I don't think. So I'll pass the baton off to... I'll go this time to Tom because he's next on my side there. I, it's 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 frustr I know it's frustrating about the COVID vaccines right now. Um, I think I think things are going to change shortly on on how they're ro rolled out. <clears throat> and again, the sixty-eight thousand residents of Franklin County, every resident will be offered a shot. If you are homebound, we've done that. they've done that before. We we I, there there's ways that we can get get that vaccines to those people that are homebound. Um, that'll work out. Um, but more importantly, if you want to work, um, it's very important that you volunteer. If you want to be part of this. Very important that we know about it so we can get you registered. And so that you can, uh, we can start doing getting the paperwork done. But the four town Sundown, Deerfield, Whiteley, Conway, we are, we are ready, and we're just waiting for the release of the uh, the vaccine to start. Yep. I know you guys have been working on that for a while, so appreciate it. They have. I, I mean, there's a meeting. There's a meeting all the time. There's meetings going on. Um, the FERCOG is is involved as well. Um, it it's. It's frustrating for all, everybody right now. Um, it, it's it, it's amazing, but um, Pfizer that has a has one of the vaccines out there. Most of their people have not been vaccinated yet, mm. and they they're they're creating it. Yeah. Um, so I, I just I I just heard that today. One of the one of the uh, students I was working with, his uh, father works for Pfizer in Boston, and he was <coughs> commenting about how his dad hadn't received a shot yet. So. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So. They're busy cranking it out. That's why I would imagine. You would think so. Yep. Thank you, David. All right. Thanks. <clears throat> Any, uh, anything, Scott? Yeah, we had a capital planning committee meeting last week and uh, I'll hold, we've gone long enough tonight. I'll update the board next week. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Jeff. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it quick too. Um, we're, we got the, the application for district local technical assistance, which is for COG, um, helping us out with sort of a, a priority or a set several priorities depend, depending on funding availability and we'll be talking about that in a, in a couple of weeks. Um, also some good news is Sunderland has received a designation as an age-friendly community member from the AARP um, which basically oh, gives nice. the town okay. access to resources to become more age-friendly and, and help with surveys and things like that. Um, so that, that was a uh, oh. Council on Aging initiative, the designation, so that's exciting, and we'll be um, moving forward with that, and I think it ties in nicely with the Sanderson Place development and what's going on there. Um, and then just the last thing is that uh, beginning this Thursday is the MMA annual meeting, which is a virtual meeting this year, uh, yeah, Thursday and Friday of this week, um, so that, uh, that'll be interesting. Nice. Uh, well, no. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Won't be walking through snow drifting streets in Boston, right? <laughs> as we usually are. No frozen sprinkler pipes. <laughs> not that. <laughs> That's right. Unfortunately, I've got I've got a lot of work things going on, so I won't be able to attend that. But I'll be curious to see how it um, 
how it comes out anyway. <clears throat> All right, do we have any, um, any public comments or anything at this point in our agenda? Yes, I do. Hey, shoot. Hi, I'm Kevin Murphy on uh, uh, North Plain Road. All right. Uh, thank you. We um, we've been we've been here for uh, five or so years, and uh, well, we recently had a change in our trash pickup uh, to USA. They bought out everybody. Yep. Yeah. Um, the price went up. They're now charging ten dollars for a tree removal for Christmas. Uh, no explanation, no warnings of price increases. Uh, customer service isn't that great. Long story short, I do know the history of the town with trash uh, through investigation. And my understanding is it's kind of like a public utility in a sort of a way. And um, there are some regulations that happen in some towns where, you know, if you have competition, you allow that, you you know, you have multiple choices. Residents can choose the less expensive or whatever they need. But um, USA has become a monopoly. And I'm concerned that um, we need to relook at town, trash pickup for the town of Sunderland. Either making it municipal or what other options there are. Um, you know, I, we talked to Sydney and try to, you know, I talked to other residents and we're just really curious, would like to know, is that, a, is that something that we should be looking at at this point? Well, I'm actually surprised somebody hasn't brought it up earlier, given the it consolidation happened. in the business. You it know? happened, it happened overnight. <laughs> it yeah, was like, right. all of a sudden USA had just swallowed everybody up. So, yeah, what, tip what typically happens in, in towns, I believe, if there's one company? Uh, supplying private individuals, in other words? Yeah. Is, you know, um, is there a responsibility or is there a, a something that the town would need to do to protect their citizens from price gouging uh, for this kind of service. I mean, I mean, the alternative, of course, is to, you know dump dump things in the woods down the yeah. street. You know, we want to we want to preserve our community and keep it clean. No, you know, people get low price um, waste removal. So, I think it would be something of Sunderland's interest in, in investigating and trying to come up with a solution. Um, hi, Kevin. Um, one thing on the, uh, the Christmas trees, um, there's two farmers in town that will take your Christmas trees at no charge. <laughs> Matter of fact, Kevin, they, they love those Christmas trees because the goats are, goats, they goats actually <laughs> love them. So Thomas farm and, and Christy, they, they would take your, they take your Christmas trees in a second. Um, Thank you. It, it's, it, you're, you're right about everything you said about, it, it seems like we went from, we, we went, we, we had, we were hearing concerns, what, two years ago about having four different trash haulers going through town yeah. on the same day. <laughs> yep. Oh no, three or were on days, Wednesday right? and one was on Thursday or something. Exactly. And, and they said, well, you guys got to do something better than that. And then we went from that problem to, to having only one overnight. You're absolutely right. Um, I, I don't know what options are available to us. Um, we can, we can look. Um, I always thought, I personally always thought that the best thing that one of the things that I, I love the town when the town was uh, contracting because um, no. our, our town administrator at the time, Margaret, she would get on the, the phone with the trash guys. And, and I don't know if you ever dealt with trash guys, but if they're, they, if they probably fit the stereotype in your mind. And Margaret was just the opposite of that. And she, her and the trash guys would argue about 
<laughs> that they're going to increase their rates by 3% or 5%. And Margaret was always, she always won. He said, look, this is how much money we have. This is how much we're going to pay for you. So take it or leave it. But this is what we're going to do. Um, but we had the whole, we were negotiating for the whole town. I, I was very, I agree with you. I was, I was very disappointed when we went away from the, the, what was it? $2 a bag or something like that, Scott, at that time, the purple bags. That was, that was yeah. the, that was the second plan, but yeah, yeah right. When he went to bags, the other, the other thing, if I could, Mr. Chair is Sunderland yeah. had excellent recycling percentages when we were yeah. townwide. We and did. now there's really not a way of tracking that. No. Yeah. Anyway. And, and not, not only, and, and Kevin, the, the, just so you know, but at the time, um, every, the more we recycled, the more money that we got back. Correct. So, so it paid for a lot of, so we were able to pay to put out trash receptacles for the, the on the ball fields and at the different places around town. Um, it, 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 we got reams of paper we were able to buy recycled paper because we had monies available and it, it was disappointed when we lost it. I, I agree. Said that a thousand times, but at the time people didn't want to pay that extra dollar or whatever it was for, for the taxes to support that system. So that's why right. it was cut. And now we're actually that's paying more person. per person. So, so, so how, how does it, well, you know, how does this, <clears throat> You know, is there a study that can be done, or is there any anybody like how how do we invent what? like look look at this? <laughs> well, I would imagine we'd start looking at it. now. It'll be interesting to see now because there's probably less available people to bid on that too. I would imagine, but we can start looking at it. Have, you know, we could start going back and looking at what we did before. I would imagine, right? You'd want to serve. You want to survey, see what number of participants there were, develop an RFQ, right. put an RFQ out there, see who the bidders are, and then recognize that whatever that bid rate is is going to be spread across the tax rate. That's right. important. You're talking about a, a significant. And when it went away, it was over three hundred thousand dollars off of right. the annual town budget. Everybody paid for it. There may not be the appetite for a town wide. That said, I certainly miss mine. Yeah. So that would be the we steps. Could. You got to define. Yeah. You got to define what the goal is, right? If the goal is townwide mm -hmm. pickup, then you got to nail down the number of participants. You nail down the number of participants, then you can take that out to bid. After you get a bid number, then and only then can you say with a straight face, "Are we prepared in the budget season to take it to town meeting as a budget item?" Right. You and could we, actually very well drive drive the town into a two and a half override just for trash, depending on oh, how tight would. the budget is. Yeah. Oh, oh you depending would. On the Scott, budget. Yep. I, I mean, it, track, I, I mean, trash pickup was like. 350 oh, when my. we left, 350, I think so, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Well, it's just, you know, you know, being individuals, we don't have a choice, right? So whereas if we're a town, we're united, we're like a union, you know, like you said, you call, you negotiate, you, you get, you say, no, it's not going to work for us. I'm sorry. And the, you know what? This, this the trash companies will have to, you know, they negotiate on a, on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, I don't know. So as a just well, just to be the just to be the counter to that, and I pre, I applaud you bringing it forward, and as well as the concept. I think it's worth absolutely exploring. You know, we had a group of individuals show up and vote, and they voted to not do it. So so uh, Jeff, do you think you could? Uh... You could uh, research what's out there for trash hauling in Sunderland. Tongue I mean, I, yeah. I still see, I still see what is it, Sunshine? There, there's I, oh, I, yeah. I I still see their trucks in in town. Yeah. Um, we got two, Re right? I think Re I, I think Republic still is still available. Yep. Just, yeah. Is it BFI uh, that's out there? Is the other blue one? What's that? Because there's a blue one that comes around. I want to say Tuesdays or Wednesdays in my street. Yeah, that's, BFI? I believe that I, I would believe that's Republic. Probably right. okay. No, they're bought out too. My, but, my wife, my wife has been doing a lot of the research, and she says there's nothing left. Okay, but uh, Jeff, see if you could, Jeff. Um, and and Jeff, what I would recommend, Kevin, I, what I'd recommend doing is called Janamine from right. the Franklin County uh, Solid Waste. Yep. 
mm. talk to talk to Jan. Um, Jan, Jan, Jan and Mean Kevin is uh, she has her she has her pulse. She has a pulse of trash, <laughs> solid mm-hmm. waste. Um, yep. So if anybody would know, it would be Jan. So if you could give Jan a call and ask her what's available, Jeff, I, I think, and and then we can uh, pass that information along to uh, Kevin. Also, yep. and we'll we'll start there. I don't think there's enough goats to eat all the trash of Sunderland, though. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I don't think so. Did you say uh, a meme? A M. How do you pronounce that last A-M-I-N-E. name? A M I N E. I mean, Jamie. And she's at the Franklin County, and we are members of the Franklin County Solid Waste District. Yep. So we are members. So, so like if you had like a, you wanted to get rid of a refrigerator or something, you right. could take it up to the, uh, you could take, because you're, because we're Franklin County Solid Waste, you could take it up to the Greenfield Landfill. And for a fee, you could dispose of it up there. So there are, there are so for bigger things like that, and I, I bet you, well, I, again, I know there's options in town for the, I'm going to say the Christmas tree, but whenever you have, like, if you want to get rid of the bed or something big, washing machine or whatever, furniture, you can, you can go up to the Greenfield uh, transfer station as a member of the Franklin County solid waste and, and get rid of it there as well. Options other than just plunking it on your end of your driveway. If you want, I, I, I mean, yep. it's not, it, unfortunately, it's not convenient, but you can do it. Right. All right, so we'll start looking at that again. I've been waiting to see uh, how long it would take for somebody to start looking at that. And Cindy's just reminding us that solid waste district info is on the website. So that's good, you can go out there and check that out because that is a, a good feature that a lot of times we forget about. <clears throat> uh, I took my hazardous waste up there this past year. I took. Uh, antifreeze from my cars, uh, used motor oil, um, old paints. I, I had some old uh, um, oil based paints uh, you can get rid of, and they do that twice a year. So you can you can take advantage. I went up to GC, I was at the GCC, so there you go, comes in handy. It nice. does, but yeah, thank we, you very we, much. Yeah, we, we all kind of feel the pain on that one, so we get that. All right. Thanks, Kevin. We'll let you know what we find. Okay, thanks. And thanks, Jeff, for looking. Did you, I saw your hand up earlier. Did you want to bring up something to it all, Jeff? Or? No, I was just going to mention that uh, Republic. Okay. Uh, just that yeah. there may be options, but I'll, you guys already mentioned it, so I'll do my research and, and get back. Yeah, I would, talk, I would talk to Jan, see, see what Jan has to say. She, she may... I, I know I know they're closing down incinerators are closing down uh, landfills right now so it's it's getting harder and harder to find places to get rid of trash and I know they've changed the rules on recycling for the private haulers too a little bit from one to the other well so. recycling now they're charging they're charging people for the recycling right yeah. so it used to, it used to be it used to they used to get paid for per ton of paper whatever yep. now they're char- now they're now the murph is charging people to deliver recyclables to okay get rid of it yep it's getting tougher <clears throat> all right <clears throat> so that that exhausts our regular topic so our next meeting is scheduled for next monday at our usual time 6 30 january 25th so unless uh unless we've got anything else i'd take a Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Was that a second, Tom? All right. All those uh, in favor. <laughs> baby, what are, what are you doing to us? You both cut out for a second at the same time. So, all right. All those in favor of adjourning? <laughs> Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs>